So how are we going to get the goods from our origin to where they're going to get consumed or our customer? Well, in this section, we're going to go over that. So section 15.4 of topic 15, we're going to talk about transportation and moving those goods. So we have to make some decisions on how we're going to do that. So we have to decide what mode are we going to use? We're going to have to pick the carrier, our transportation routing, and are we just going to outsource it? So for the mode, we have to figure out what does our customer expect? Are they expecting it to come on pallets or are they expecting it to come in a cardboard box? And based on that, we can figure out, well, how are we going to ship that? Are we going to send it through DHL, FedEx, UPS, the post office? Or are we going to have to contract a semi-truck to move a pallet or somehow get it onto a cargo ship to get it across the, around the world? So how are we going to route it? You know, if we have multiple shipments going to multiple places and we're going to get, let's say, a semi-truck to move it, well, what stops do we want them to make in what order? That could be something we focus on. Are we going for shortest distance, shortest time? Or is it based on the mode that we're shipping? Outsourcing, you know, we can just get someone else to do it for us. So our modal service characteristics. So on this chart here, we have rail, motor, ship, air, and pipeline. And it's rated one through five, five being the best. So for the best, when it comes to cost per ton mile, it's actually a pipeline is the best. But the air is actually the most expensive when it comes to that. However, air is the fastest mode of shipment, where pipeline is the slowest. Kind of a flip there. Delivery reliability, pipeline becomes number one. You know, it's, it's in a pipe. Where is it going to go? It can't make a wrong turn somewhere, right? But the ship is actually the least reliable. Well, how can a ship be impacted or impact your delivery? Well, it can run into bad weather and have to take a detour. It might not be allowed to dock at the port. It might have other things that go wrong with it. You know, all these different things, it's a gamble when you use a, a cargo ship. But I, ideal distance? Well, ideal distance is motor. They're the best. However, the ship is the worst for ideal distance. You know, what about greenhouse gases? Well, the pipeline actually is the least. It's just a pipe, right? So it's not producing any greenhouse gases. And then the air, you know, when you look at it, if you say per pound of cargo, air might be the worst one of it all. So you have to think about these when you're choosing your mode. How do you want to do it? What is your goal of your company? So next we want to look at the motor side of it by looking at trucking. You know, we always see semi trucks on the road. So let's do a look, look a little bit more into them. So we have our truckload carriers and then we have our less than truckload carriers. So if you think of truckload as the truck is only shipping your goods, nothing else in there. So that's a truckload. It doesn't have to be a full truck. It could be half a truck, but it's only your load. And then less than truckload is, you know, you only have part of that cargo. So you might have, in this picture, it has three green pallets on the back there. So those three might be yours, but everything else in there might be many other people. You know, think of a UPS truck. You know, that entire truck isn't just carrying your package. It's carrying many people's packages. So that would be a less than truckload carrier in this example. But if you're a big company that gets many packages a day, you might be the only stop that truck is making if it's UPS because every box in that truck might be coming to you. So that's one way to look at truckload and less than truckload. So what characteristics influence transportation? Well, there's a lot that we have to look at when it comes to that, you know, our products. So is the product a high density product, a lightweight but bulky, or high value or easy to resell, or easily damaged? You know, different things mean different types of transportation we're gonna need. So we have high density. 
So think about a truck that's shipping lead, for example. You know, lead is heavy, but it's a small amount is very heavy. So the truck would actually reach its weight capacity before being full. So we actually weigh out the truck. So you have steel, grain, engine blocks, beer. All these are examples of items that are like this. So we have the next category, lightweight but bulky. So our truck is actually going to fill up before it hits its weight capacity. So we call this cubing out. So we took up all the, cube, the cubic feet of the truck before we hit the weight limit. So even though you do that, the truck is still, the transporter or the carrier is still going to charge you for the whole truck as if you're using the full weight of the truck or weight capacity. So you can think of potato chips, tortilla chips, or some bakery items. I mean, if you think about it, bags of potato chips don't weigh the same amount as lead, but bags of potato chips take up a lot more space. Then we have our high value or easy to resell. So these things are big targets for theft. Do we need to disguise the truck or have extra security or insurance? For example, it could be on a truck that's just driving that has no markings on the outside. It doesn't say what company is transporting it. It doesn't say, you know, any advertisement on the side of the truck. It might be just a white truck rolling down the road. It has nothing. But sometimes you see a car that's right behind that truck. Well, that's a security car that's going with it. So all these things. Uh, you can even pay for additional insurance because you know that stuff could be stolen. So DVDs of new movies that are coming out, weapons, jewelry, computer chips, alcohol, cigarettes, designer clothing. All these things are examples. And then our final category, easily damaged. Uh, you'll probably have to pay more for our packing because we want to make sure we pack it right. So even though that truck might hit some potholes, speed bumps, whatever, we know that our product is not going to be damaged. So there's a lot of extra care in that handling. So we can say eggs, you know, imagine driving with some eggs like that. Bakery items or delicate computer parts. All these different things could be easily damaged. So while we have, or look considering all these, you know, let's look at industries that might be using some of these transportation methods, especially e-commerce. You know, everybody's selling online these days and it's just growing uncontrollably, it, all, it seems. So in 2016, it was 394, 860, you know, and that's probably millions of dollars. So if you think about that, that much value of inventory is driving on the roads because from e-commerce sales. So we have year to year growth, which is our red line there. It ends at 16%. So 16% from 2015 to 2000, or 2015 to 2016 grew 16%. It says here. And then our, you know, a percent of our total here is 8.39%. So over 8% of transportation is because of e-commerce. Pretty amazing, isn't it? So next, let's look at our combinations of our intermodal transports. So when we look at it, you know, we have rail, truck, air, and water. Those are the basic ones. We're going to leave uh, the pipeline out of this for now. So a rail that, let's say, goes to truck, so we have a trailer on a flat car. Have you ever seen that before? Sometimes those are called piggybacks because you actually take the container off a trailer, put it on a, on, a, on a rail car, or sometimes you just put the entire truck trailer with the wheels and all onto the, onto the rail car. So a truck going by water. So we have a roll on, roll off. So the truck actually drives onto the ship and then drives off the ship. So all these different combinations here. Um, you know, we have sea air going from water to go to air, birdie back going from air to truck or truck to air, container shipping from water to rail or rail to water. 
all these different combinations. So sometimes one solution or one transportation method is not sufficient. So you have to combine them. And that's all this is really getting at. You don't need to remember these fancy terms of fishy back, land bridge, birdie back, road railer. You don't have to remember those. Just realize that the combinations, you may have to combine different shipping methods. So who owns the freight that we're shipping? You know, we have the freight on board, FOB. So there's actually two here, two different classifications. We have freight on board origin and freight on board destination. So the origin and destination is the important part here. This is where the, the responsibility changes hands from the seller to the buyer. So freight on board origin means that the buyer takes responsibility from the shipper's dock. So the, usually the buyer has to coordinate the, tra the transportation, the shipping. And then they make sure that the paperwork gets to the seller so the seller can hand it to the driver when the driver gets there to come to pick up the materials. And then that driver drives it to the, the seller or you know the buyer's warehouse. However, when it's freight on board destination, the seller is responsible responsible all the way to the destination. So that's where the, it's cut off. So once that hits the dock of the buyer, then the buyer takes responsibility for that shipment. So, you know, who pays for the shipping? Well, if it's freight on board origin, the buyer prepays for it. Or the seller prepays for it. And then the buyer will pay for just uh, will pay the seller. When it comes right down to it, the buyer is paying for the shipping one way or another. Either it's the higher product price or it's a lower product price with a shipping cost added on to it. Either way, the buyer is actually paying for the shipping. So who ultimately pays for the tr cost of transportation? Essentially, the buyer is paying. So just, just remember that. Just like when you order something from Amazon. If you have Amazon Prime, you've already technically prepaid your shipping. Or if you don't have Amazon Prime and it says it's going to cost you $5.99 to ship it, well, you're paying $5.99 to ship it. But Amazon is technically responsible for that package all the way up until it hits your doorstep. If it gets lost in shipping, Amazon has to contact the carrier and say, what happened to it? So, remember, freight on board origin means the buyer is responsible for that shipment at the origin, meaning the ship, the, the seller's dock. And freight on board destination is the, the seller is responsible all the way up until it hits the buyer's dock. All right, so this was a little bit about transportation and how we move things from one place to another. So next, let's look at warehousing. And hopefully, this is, this is an area I like, and I hope that you find this interesting as well.